Okay, so now we're gonna talk about the logical operators in Python. The logical operators and or, we use them in order to combine or connect multiple Boolean expressions in order to build a logic or to build the rules. So let's understand exactly what this means. Okay, so now let's say that we have this condition. We are checking is three smaller than five and we want to check at the same time another condition like is five equal to five. So that means my friend, we are now evaluating two conditions, not only one. So we have somehow to connect those two conditions so that Python evaluate both of them. And here you have two options, two logical operators, the AND OR. So now let's see how they work. Let's pick the AND. If you use the AND operator, then you are telling Python, return true if both conditions are true. So both of them should be true in order to get at the output true. So now for example here, the first condition is true, three is smaller than five, and the second condition is as well true, five is equal to five. So now Python is gonna say, uh-huh, we have the AND operator, both of the conditions must be fulfilled in order to get true, and that's why we are getting in the output true. But now let's take another two conditions, like we are saying, is this three greater than five? And the second condition is five equal to five. Now Python gonna evaluate each condition separately. The first one is not true. Three is not greater than five. And Python gonna go and evaluate the second condition and we will get it true. Now after that, Python gonna execute the AND, but this time it will not work. We will not get true at the output because both of the conditions are not true. We have one false and one true. This is not enough for the AND operator. That's why we will get in the output false. Now next, let's try to put an OR in between. So if you use the OR you are telling for Python, at least one condition must be true. So it's enough to have one true in order to get in the output true. So now for the first example, we have both as true. It is more than enough. So we will get in the output true. And now for the second example, we have one false and one true. Well, this time, since we are using OR operator, it is enough. At least we should have one true. That's why in the output, you will get true. It's not like the AND. The AND is more restrictive. And let's have another example where we say is three bigger than five and the second condition is five not equal to five now python gonna go and evaluate both of the conditions and both of them gonna return false and now it's gonna check the or operator at least we need one true in this scenario we don't have anywhere true that's why we will get false this is the only scenario where you get false in the output if both are returning false and you don't have any true so it is very simple if you use the end operator it's gonna return true only if both of the conditions are true but in the other side on the or operator you will get true if at least one of the conditions is true so this is really amazing operator in order to check multiple things together so that you don't check one thing at a time now let's go and practice all right now let's start with a simple examples first we are checking whether three is higher than one and let's say that we have another one five is less than one now we have like two conditions and we'd like to go and connect them let's say i'm gonna go with the and operator and then let's have a print and let's go and check the results. Now, as you can see, we are getting false because the first part is true, but the second part is not true. So here we have false and true. It will not fulfill the condition. That's why we are getting false. But of course, if you go and correct your conditions where you have the five is greater than one and you go and execute it, you will get true. And that's because both of the expressions are returning true. Now let's go and try out the OR operator for both of them. So here we can have an OR and as well here, or and I'm gonna go and comment those out this as well let's go and execute the first one you will get true because here we have in the first expression true and the second one is false but all what we need is only one true now let's make both of them as false so three is as well less than one and you go and execute it you will get false because you don't have any true both of them is false so as you can see it is very simple right okay so now let's have a real example in order to understand when we use those stuff now, let's say that we are building like monitoring system to check whether our system is under pressure, like for example, the memory or the CPU under high usage. So let's go and create two variables, CPU usage and memory usage. And now let's go and give values, for example, here 70. And here we have the memory usage is 95. So now let's say that if something above 90, it's going to be critical. So we're going to go and check whether the CPU usage is higher than 90. And as well, we're going to check the memory usage higher than 90 but now we have to go and connect them so that means it's enough to have one of those conditions as true to trigger the alert and now think about it which one we have to use should we use and or should we use or well since i'm saying at least one of them is true we have to go and use that or operator now let's go and print 
in the output and execute. So you will get true and that's because we have one of those resources under high usage. So we have here 95. So now let's say that it is cooling down and we have it around 50%. And if you execute it, you will get false. So now that means everything is fine and we don't have any alerts. So as you can see, we have here two conditions and we are checking multiple stuff in one go. All right, now let's move to another real use case for the end. And this everyone knows it. We're going to check whether the user credentials before logging. So we usually give an email and password and we have to go now and check whether everything is correct. So now let's say that we have a parameter called email and a password and they are like boolean so let's say here this is true but the password is false now we have to check those two informations and of course both of them should be true in order to allow the user to log in so that means we have to check those two informations and we're gonna connect them using the and operator everything must be true in order to allow the access so now let's go and print this information and execute so now as you can see in the output we are getting false because the password is not correct but now let's say that the user entered a correct password so with that, we have the email and the password as true. If you go and execute it, you will get true. And of course, if everything is false, that means it is as well false. So this is as well a quick use case where we use the AND operator in order to check the email and the password before login. All right, now we have a third logical operator, the NOT. It doesn't combine condition, but it flip the truth. It reverse everything. It's gonna switch the true to false and the false to true. So let's understand what this means. Now, so far we have learned how to check whether three is bigger than two. In this scenario, you will get true. And if you check is five equal to eight, that's clearly gonna give you false. So, so far, nothing surprising. Now, if you go and just add the NOT operator just before the expression, then it's gonna switch the whole reality. So the NOT operator are gonna go to the results and switch it so in this scenario we have true and it's gonna go and switch it to false so now the question is completely different than before before we have said is three greater than two but now we are saying is three not greater than two and of course the answer for this question gonna be false now the same thing gonna happen for the second example if you add the not operator just before the check it's gonna go this time and switch the false to true so this time the question gonna be is five not equal to eight well that is true it's not equal to eight so this is how the NOT operator work. Now let's go and practice a little bit. Okay, so now let's have a very simple comparison like 3 is higher than 2. And of course, if you print the results, you will get true. Because yes, 3 is higher than 2. But now if you go and say NOT, so with that we are flipping the whole thing and we will get false. And you can put it wherever you want before any Boolean value. Like for example not true so what is not true it is actually false the same thing if you go and put not false and execute you will get true now we're gonna have something funny if you say not not false so you can use it twice in order to flip it twice so the not false gonna give you true and then not not false guess what you'll get false so actually this is totally useless you can just remove it because it's gonna gives you back the original value and one more thing about the not let's say that we have a variable called name and you don't have anything inside it so it's blank only double quotes and now if you go and print it you will get as well nothing in the output. But if you go and say not name, what can happen, you will get true. And as you remember, the boolean of empty is false. And if you say not false, you will get true. The same thing if you go and say, for example, not zero, you will get as well true because zero is false and not gonna flip it to true. So that's it about the not. Okay, so now with that, we have learned how to combine two conditions using the AND or operators. Now we're gonna go to the next level where we're gonna go and mix stuff together and we're gonna have like multiple conditions in one line. So now let's say that we have multiple conditions where we say is x equal to 5. Another one we are checking is y greater than 5. And now we have a third one where we are checking is z smaller than 4. So that means now we are evaluating three conditions. And of course, if you put them all in one line, you can go and connect them using the logical operators. And now here you have to be very careful which one you are using because depend on your design, you will get different results. So let's say that the first operator is going to be or and the second one is and. And let's say that we are getting the 
following values from those variables 5, 8, and 6. And now if you go and execute it, it is very important to understand the order of the execution. So here it is very important to understand and operator has higher priority than the OR operator. So that means AND will be executed before OR. So that means Python gonna focus on the AND operator and as well the expressions on the left and on the right. So first it's gonna evaluate is 8 greater than 5? Well, it is true. And then evaluate the right side. Is 6 smaller than 4? Well, it is false. Now after that, Python gonna go and apply the AND operator. Now since it is not fulfilling the requirements, both of them are not true. We have one false. That means in the output you will get false. So this is the first part. And now the result of the AND operator gonna be used together with the OR operator to get the final results. So now OR operator has the second priority. On the left side we have 5 equal to 5. Well, this is true. So now Python has everything in order to execute the OR operator. Well, it is fulfilling the requirements. We have at least one true. That's why in the output you will get true. So my friend, this is the default execution order. By default AND has higher priority than OR. But this is not really nice because we are not having the control of the execution. And you say, you know what, I would like to have the OR operator executed first before the AND. So I would like to have a control on the execution. Well, in order to do that, we use the parentheses. Now, if you go and put the OR operator with the conditions left and right between parentheses, with that you are telling Python, hey, don't go and use the default priority. Now I'm designing the priority. First, go and execute everything between my parentheses, and then the result should be evaluated with whatever outside my parentheses. So if you go and execute it, it's gonna work like this. First, Python gonna go and execute your parentheses. So what do you have inside it? We have two conditions. Is 5 equal to 5? Well, we have true. And the second condition is as well true. Well, we have more than enough for the OR operator. That's why we will get in the output true. And now only after that, Python gonna go and grab the AND operator and evaluate the part outside the parentheses. So is 6 less than 4? Well, no. That's why we will get false. And now Python has everything for the AND operator. So here it is not fulfilling the requirements. We have one false. That's why in the output you will get false. So once you have more than two conditions and you are using multiple logical operators, you have to be very careful designing your condition. You have to do it step by step and understand the order of the execution. So now let's go and practice about this. So now we have the following task and it says, allow access only if the user is logged in or they are a guest, but they must not be banned. So imagine you are building like an online store. You can allow the user to buy things if they are a guest or if they are logged in. And maybe you have like some blacklist where you banned people from buying things from your website for some reason. So now we start by creating variables. Now the user could be logged in. So we could have a variable like this is logged in and the user could be a guest. So we could have another variable is guest and the user could be banned. So this is a third status about our user is banned. Now in order to build this, we have to check all those stuff. Let's start one by one. So we're gonna say is logged in. This is the first one. And as you can see in English, it's very easy. Or they are guests. So that means we are using the operator or and then is guest. And then the last one, but they must not be banned. Of course, we're gonna go and use the is banned, but here we are saying not banned. So again, English, yeah? Not is banned, but still we cannot use the not in order to connect our operators together. That's why we have to put in between something like and or. Now, of course, we cannot cheat anymore. There is like no and or in our logic, but actually this is an and. So the user should be logged in or a guest, but at the same time, the user should not be banned. So here, we have an AND. Now, of course, we have to play with the values. Let's go and print the whole thing and start adding few values. Now, let's say that you are logged in, but you are not a guest. So this is false. And let's say that you are not banned. So now if you execute it, you will get true. So now, of course, the question how Python did execute it. First, the AND operator has more priority. So this part can be executed. What do we have here? Is guest is false. Not is banned is true. So false and true gonna be false. So this part can give us false. But the first part is true. So is logged in true. Now that means true or false, you will get true. Well, that is really good. Now let's go and try something else where we say, actually you are banned. You managed somehow to log in, but you are at the blacklist, you are banned. Now, if you go and execute it, you will get true. Hmm, this is not working, right? So what happens here? 
first the end operator worked so here we have a false and not is banned so here false and false you'll get false and the first one is true so that's why we are getting still true well the whole issue is that the order of the execution is not correct i don't want to check those two together actually if you read it we have here two parts this is the first part so they belong together either you are logged in or you are guest so this is the first thing that has to be checked and then after that we check whether you are banned so that means i would like to have this part first executed and that's why i'm gonna go and use the parentheses at the left and as well at the right with that we're gonna force a python to execute the or operator first so now let's go and execute it you will get false now your logic is correct that's why we have always to test and to be very careful with mixing or and 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 controlling the order of the execution so now what happened here python gonna go and first execute the first part the or because we forced it to do that so here we have is logged in you are logged in but you are not gassed we have one true so this is gonna return true and then python gonna go and execute the second part the second part is false you are banned so we have now true and false that's why we are getting now false so as you can see we are getting completely different result as we have controlled the execution of our logic and actually it is not that complicated just follow the logic in the text and this is what we have implemented step by step in our logic as well so first this part can be executed and only after that we're going to check whether the user is banned or not so now i know this might be a little bit complicated but only if you practice you can understand how things works Well, if you think that we are done here, you are totally wrong because now it's time to challenge you. And this time it will not be easy. I have for you five challenges. The first challenge, check if a username is not empty and the age is greater than or equal to 18. I know this is an easy one. Let's move to the second one. Check if the password is at least eight characters long and does not contain spaces. Mm -hmm, so it is interesting here. The third one, check if a user's email is not empty, contains ads and ends with dot com okay the fourth one check if a username is a string is not none and is longer than five characters so this time we are validating the username and now we come to the final boss to the advanced challenge check if the user is either an admin or moderator and at the same time check either they are not banned or they have verified their email so a lot of things is going on here pause the video and then go solve those tasks. All right, my friends, so that's it for the logical operators. They are very important in order to build logic, to make complex logic. Now, after that, we're gonna cover two groups, the membership and the identity operators. So if you like this video and you would like to have more free content like this, then support the channel by subscribing, liking, commenting. This really can help the channel to grow and to reach others like you. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.